Hello, peasants and noble ones, I'm Charlemagne, and today, I'm going to answer the most googled questions on the internet about me. Well, I did a lot of things during my life, let's do a quick summary. I was the sole ruler of the Frankish kingdom from 772 until my death in 814, expanding it through a lot of wars and conquests. I spread Christianity across Europe and oversaw an important cultural revival, called the Carolingian Renaissance. Oh, and in the meantime, I casually became Roman Emperor. I'm tired of people calling me illiterate in all those years. It's true that I never learned to write, but I can read. Also I spoke Latin and a little bit of Greek. So, I'm just half illiterate. Oh boy, where do I start? Let's use a map to help us. In the south we find those Muslim infidels, the Basques and the Lombards. In the east the Saxons, Slavs and Evers. And in the north, those pagans call the Vikings. Fortunately, with the help of God, and my mighty army, I defeated all of them. I even conquered some of them, like the Lombards in 774 or the Saxons in 804. Those damn Saxons. It took me 20 years of wars, to finally defeat them. Yes, his name was Karlman. My father, King Papon, divided the kingdom between me and him. After he died in 768. The simple reason why most of you, never heard of my brother, is because he sadly died of illness, in the year 771. I was crowned in the old Basilica of St. Peter in Rome on a date that is easy to remember, Christmas Day of the year 800. It was a surreal experience, even though not everything went as I expected. I would just like to add that I am not the only king to be crowned at Christmas. Stephen I of Hungary, William the Conqueror, Roger II of Odeville and Henry VI Hohenstaufen were all crowned on Christmas Day. But I'm the most important, so I'm the only one people think of when they talk about Christmas coronations. Long story short, it's all the Pope's fault. In 797 a new ruler took the throne of the Eastern Roman Empire, Irene of Athens. A woman. Who, by the way, blinded and later killed her own son to keep the throne. Therefore, Pope Leo III autonomously decided that the Emperor of Rome could not be a woman, so he decided that the title of Roman Emperor was vacant, so it should go to someone else. Someone like me. So. Without any legitimacy, I was crowned Emperor of the Romans. Irene was not very happy when she discovered that a barbarian had been crowned Emperor of the Romans. Well, there are many reasons for this interesting nickname. 1. I am the progenitor of many noble dynasties and families, whose members have shaped the history of Europe, like the Capetians, the Ottonians and the House of Ivrea. 2. My empire gave birth to some of the nations that will have an important role in the history of Europe, such as France and the Holy Roman Empire. 3. I created for the first time since the fall of Rome, a united empire with Europe at its center, or at least part of it, that tried to gather the heritage of the Roman culture. And last but not least, for my influence, that is still alive today. That's why I'm the father of Europe, from a biological and cultural point of view. I never thought I would say such a sentence. For me, it was important to educate and spread culture, among my subjects. The scholars and intellectuals of my time introduced a new style of writing, easier to read and write, to help the spread of books and knowledge, through the copying of texts. They called it the Carolingian minuscule, in honor of my great family, the Carolingians. You see, my empire was destined to fall, or, 
if we want to use the right word, divide. Let me explain something. In the Frankish tradition, when a king died, he divided the land among his heirs. For example, my father, Papon the Short, divided his kingdom between me and my brother. I myself, plan to divide my empire among my three heirs, Papon of Italy, Carl the Younger and Louis the Pious. Sadly, Carl and Papon died before me, so Louis inherited all the kingdom, but when he died, all of his three heirs outlived him, and the empire was inevitably divided. Unfortunately no one reunited my empire, but my heritage can still be seen today, and I am proud of it. My resting place is in Aachen, modern-day Germany. It was the seat of my royal palace, and the capital of my empire. Today instead of my palace, you can visit the impressive cathedral, that they built around it. More precisely you can find me in the beautiful Palatine Chapel, inside a golden sarcophagus. A very cool place to pass the eternity, if you ask me. Ah, this thing will never end. For centuries, French kings, German emperors or nationalists from both sides, used me as their symbol. The French claim that I'm mostly a French hero, the Germans say that I'm mostly a German symbol. If you ask me, the truth is simple. I was, and I will be forever, a Frank. I am neither French nor German, I was and I am, a man of the mighty kingdom of the Franks. But, since we can say that I'm the father of France and Germany, both can use me as their symbol. Just stop arguing. M, well, where do I start? Hold on Carl. Keep this answer for another video. Oh, sorry for the interruption. Hello peasants and noble ones. I'm Sam Godwin, the creator of this video. You want to know the answer to this last question? Yes? Then stay tuned, because this and other interesting topics will be discussed in the first ever episode of The Late History Show. The first late show where we talk and learn about history with the ones who made it. Also, besides Charlemagne, we will have some other special guests. So, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned, because if I will edit fast enough, the first episode of the Late History Show will be out very soon.